Hello, Chiefs fans, and welcome to the week three edition of Kingdom Corner. I'm your host, Danilo DiGiulio. You can find my content on YouTube, Facebook Gaming, Twitch, and Twitter under ThunderDan88. show today is brought to you by RGR Football, and we hope you're enjoying it on FTFN. This week's game is being billed as an AFC Championship preview, but is it just going to be another good game? The presumptuous pundits are out in force this week with their prognostications for the Chiefs at the Ravens. A majority of those soothsayers are selecting the Baltimore Ravens to defeat the Kansas City Chiefs in their Week 3 matchup of unbeatens. Many consider this game, as I mentioned before, a potential preview of the AFC title game. I myself am one who has alluded to that fact that it very well could be. One major caveat I added in saying that was that it is way too early to seriously consider that a given. What with the myriad of challenges each team has yet to face. Every year, teams deal with unexpected injuries, as has already been evidenced by the number of big-name players who went down in Week 2, many of whom are lost until the 2021 season. Then there's the new, ever-present threat, the Sword of Damocles that is always hanging above us, the coronavirus. Any player or coach could be lost to quarantine or the illness for a number of weeks should they get sick or even come in contact with someone who's tested positive for COVID-19. One thought I definitely do not agree with, many of the anchors upon, is the fact that a lot of them think that the Ravens will not only win the football game, but they'll win in a blowout of the undefeated defending champions. The reasons I protest are many, and the least of which is the fact that this Chiefs team just won the Super Bowl last year. That matters, but that's not the main reason. And some of the events that we have to look at, we have to look back the past few years to think about those things and consider them in my breakdown of the coming game. These events are undeniable evidence that anything more than confidence that this Sunday's game, the Ravens will be a challenge for the Chiefs. And they may succeed. Anything more than that is foolhardy. As foolhardy as thinking that any team is safe thinking a double-digit lead against Patrick Mahomes is enough. Andy Reid and Mahomes have proven that that just doesn't get it done sometimes. Lamar Jackson is the reigning league MVP, and he will be facing off against Patrick Mahomes, who is the reigning Super Bowl champion, as I mentioned, and Super Bowl MVP, and former league MVP from just a year ago. Mahomes has put up interstellar numbers from the pocket, the likes of which have only been matched by one person before in the history of the league, and they both have the same initials embossed on their luggage. Patrick Mahomes and Peyton Manning are the only two quarterbacks in the history of the NFL to throw for over 5,000 yards and 50 or more touchdowns in one season. Manning did it while he was at the height of his football powers, leading his second franchise, the Denver Broncos, which we know all too well, uh, to many a win versus the AFC West and the entire league. He was 37 years old at the time, and his arms seemed to fall off right around the middle of the Super Bowl against the Seattle Seahawks, which the Seahawks went on to win, of course, in a blowout. Following season, saw the Sheriff, as Manning was fondly known, chased off of his home field by the Chiefs by halftime after throwing an interception and then setting the league record for passing yards and then throwing three more interceptions. I was there. It was glorious. The Broncos won the Super Bowl that year on the backs of their defense, and Manning rode off into the NFL sunset. Chiefs have never looked back, winning every AFC West title since Archie's boy traded in his cleats for commercials full-time. Meanwhile, Patrick Magic Mahomes, still my favorite of his many nicknames, reached that NFL 50 touchdowns and 5,000-plus yards high watermark in his first season as the Chiefs' starting QB. A season that ended marred by questionable calls in an AFC championship game that was held at Arrowhead and led to an uninspiring Super Bowl between the Rams and the Patriots. We all remember that all too well. Young Patrick won his first Lombardi last year, second year as a Kansas City trigger man. Lamar, on the other hand, has been one and done, one and done, each of his first two seasons. Let's take a deeper look at his progress. In Lamar Jackson's first season in Baltimore, he was unarguably raw passing from the pocket as unarguably as he was dynamic when running the football. A cursory glance at Mr. Jackson's highlight reel would lead any football analyst to believe that under the tutelage of John Harbaugh and his talented coaching staff, Lamar's passing at the NFL level would eventually round into form. Last season, he showed a lot of improvement 
in his ability to pass, throwing for over 3,000 yards while completing over 66% of his passes, which was up from 58 the previous season. Two key reasons why he won the league MVP. But while Lamar is developing into an improved passer, the Chiefs have one of the decidedly best passers in the league and possibly the history of the league. So let's look at the common evaluators. Both teams have played the Houston Texans in 2020, and both quarterbacks have won with very similar results, including a pair of identical 75% completion ratings. Jackson threw for 2,000, sorry, 204 yards and one touchdown, my brain. He was sacked four times while Mahomes threw for 211 yards and three touchdowns and was sacked only once. Lamar, who's touted for his running ability, is considered one of the, you know, best runners in the league, possibly in a long time, since Vic at least. He outrushed Mahomes week one, 45 yards to zero. However, when you compare last week's rushing numbers, both QBs tallied 54 yards. Jackson did it on 16 carries against the talented Texans defense, while Mahomes achieved the mark in just six carries versus a blistering LA Chargers defense, nearly tripling the Ravens QB in yards per carry. Mahomes is arguably, arguably, a more dangerous runner because he picks and chooses crucial moments to use his legs to hurt the other team. And it often seems unexpected, even though they know he can run. The most important measurement, which can only be gleaned by glancing back at the previous two seasons, is how these teams have played against each other. In head-to-head matches versus the Chiefs, the Lamar Jackson-led Baltimore Ravens are 0-2. The games have been close, but when it comes down to the most high-pressure moments, Mahomes has proven to be the superior signal caller. Chiefs versus the Ravens, 2018. It's the first season for both of these signal callers as their team's respective starters. And the game was a Kansas City win, decided in overtime, 27-24. In that game, Lamar put up modest numbers. He completed 13 of 24 passes, 147 yards, had two touchdowns with no interceptions. Number eight in purple and black also dazzled the crowd with his seemingly untouchable movement inside the pocket and occasionally over the line of scrimmage, where he picked up 67 yards to tie Gus Edwards as his club's leading rusher. However, a fumble caused by Justin Houston, love you Justin, during one of those pocket scrambles was part of the reason that the Chiefs won that day. Patrick Mahomes did throw an interception that day, and he tied Lamar in touchdowns and sacks given up with both guys having two in each column on the final stat sheet. The major difference that day was while he did throw a pick, Mahomes completed 35 of 53 passes for 377 yards. Many of those passes ranged from exceptional to the you aren't supposed to be able to do that variety. The Chiefs saw the Ravens again in 2019. This time, Lamar completed more passes for more yards than he had in 2018, but he had zero touchdowns through the air. The major problem the Ravens faced in that 33-28 loss to the Chiefs is curly hair and wears number 15 in red and gold. While Jackson had shown some growth as a passer, Showtime, another nickname for the ketchup-loving Kansas City QB, was out there slinging the rock like a player far beyond his second year as a starter. He once again threw for over 370 yards against the vaunted Ravens defense, only this time he had three interceptions and zero Sorry, three touchdowns and zero interceptions. Let's get that straight. Everyone called both of those games potential AFC title matches, but only one of those two teams were on the field in those two AFC championships. The Kansas City Chiefs have hosted the past two title games and are aiming to run it back this year for a third time in a row. So forgive this simple reader, writer, host, analyst, whatever you want to call me, and football man, if he looks at the two teams and doesn't understand the narrative of the so-called experts. Once again, a certain number of people on major networks are predicting that LJ will dominate this game against a supposedly questionable Chiefs defense. On the other side of the ball, they expect the Ravens' defense to stop the big plays. Last year, Baltimore predicted, Earl, that they would do that, and they could not. This year, I predict the Ravens once again will not. As long as these two teams line up a healthy Patrick Mahomes, versus a healthy Lamar Jackson. Until proven otherwise, I predict the Chiefs will always have their number. The league has matched them up again this Sunday for the third year in a row. Sorry, this Monday. Monday Night Football. Three years in a row. The NFL is proving 
they're not going to be denied potential ratings bonanza games again the way they were between their big QBs back in the old days, like the limited matches between Montana and Marino. It's not happening. They're going to get these quarterbacks together a lot. Throw Deshaun Watson in that mix as well. Much to the chagrin of any Ravens fan listening to this, I think your chances of turning the tide against the red and gold is never more. Patrick Mahomes will shine once again in the national spotlight on Monday Night Football. The Chiefs will win, potentially another close one. I'm predicting 42 to 37. Go Chiefs. Hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for the week four coverage, Kingdom Corner. Till then, I'm your host, Danilo DiGiulio. Enjoy your football this Sunday and Monday night, of course. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.